Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so you're testing power supplies. You need loads, so you have to buy these resistors. Uh, they can be expensive. These power resistors. Um, I think these are 20, 30 bucks a piece. I'll I'll look them up, but they're something like that. They're they're not inexpensive. Then you've got fixed resistors. You can put them in combinations, parallel series. So. You get a couple values, you, you know, you can be, you know, you can get a few different test values out of it. But sometimes what you want to do is you want to start off with a very light load and then just slowly bring it up. Well, that's kind of hard to do when you just got a bunch of fixed resistors. I guess you could put a small resistor, but you know, another thing is, is um, you have to keep them cool. So these are 200 watts each. Um, if you need 50 watts, you don't want to buy a 100 watt resistor. You don't derate by 50%, by the way. I know they teach you that in school. They taught me that in school. That's wrong. Uh, you're just going to make that resistor so bloody hot you can't touch it. So what you want to do is derate by at least 4x, 3 to 4x, I say. So uh, 50 watts going into this 200 watt resistor, it'll get pretty toasty. Now, you can put 200 watts in this for a short time. Uh, if you got a fan on it, you put this on a heat sink, maybe you can do it a little longer, but eventually it's going to get really hot. So you got to keep these things cool. So it's capable of 200 watts as long as you can keep it cool. Stick it in your refrigerator while you're testing, I guess. Uh, but anyway, that's why you want to derate them. So we've got, I've got this Kunkin Active Low. Um, I can't remember the price on that right now. It's like over 200 bucks, I think. And then I've got this other uh, Kiksui one back here that was, it's nice load, but it's used and it's around the same price on Amazon. Um, it's about the same price on eBay. So uh, another option is to get one of these little boxes from China. And I got this on eBay. And it, I think the maker, let me see, it says Maker Hawk. It's a Maker Hawk power tester. Uh, it's capable of 150 watts, and it'll do up to 200 volts or up to 20 amps. But, you know, in whatever combinations to give you 150 watts. And it does have a fan on it. So, here, uh, you know, I'll, I'll bring the camera over closer so you can, you can see see what it looks like in the box. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to test this power supply with it and see how it works. All right. Um, this guy is, I think it was $60 on eBay. Uh, you, you might be able to find it at other outlets for less money. So I just thought for $60 I'll buy this just for a quick demonstration and uh, it's cheaper than buying, you know, three or four resistors probably. So, all right, let's give it a go. Let's see what it looks like. I'm kind of interested. Oh, yeah, I'm interested in see what this thing does, but I, what it does do is it'll also test batteries, and I kind of wanted a battery tester. I have another one that I'll show you later, but um, this will test batteries, it'll test USB ports, um, things like that. So, uh, I'll show you that. Uh, pretty cool, pretty universal. And for the price, you know, it seems reasonable, I think. As long as it works, <laughs> let's give it a go, all right? Okay, let's bring the camera over. All right, guys, so let's open this little box. See what we see. Um, it's a nice little unit in here. I like the way it's packaged. Um, one page guide. This can be found on the internet too. So, yeah, has a bunch of different inputs here. And it takes a 12 volt uh, power supply in here, 6 to 12 volts. And this is just from the display and the electronics. Um, so there's not very much power coming in here because all the power is being tested through the, the transistors down here. So, through your load. All right, so take off this little plastic guy.
There we go. That's one heck of a heat sink. That's really cool. That's tons, of, really thin. Tons of surface area is what you want. So it plugs in over here. And I guess, I'm not sure, I haven't put one of these together before, but it looks like you could take this heat sink off. I can see some transistors down in there. Looks like one really big one and two smaller ones. And here's the outline of the big one. And look at all this, all these holes. That's really neat. So really cool, I was going to say. <laughs> so the air blows right through, right by the transistor, right through the board. I, I don't know if I've seen that before. That's kind of cool. And right here it shows the polarity of the input voltage, the plus is center pin. That's that's a nice touch. So I don't have to go measure it and try to figure it out. Oh, same thing with this guy. It says a fan jack here. So I guess you hook up another fan. And then I'm not I don't know what's underneath this tape. It's uh, the connector for the display, I guess. There's a display there and wraps around so it's just connects on the other side. Wow, look at these big old these must be for measuring current. Like current sense resistors. <laughs> so well it does do 20 amps, so I guess. Uh, that's pretty neat. It has a diode down here. Looks like it's across these input pins. It's probably a reverse protection. It says that you're supposed to put the voltage in correctly, but oh, here we go. V plus in, V minus in. So this is a plus and minus. But look at this. It's got all these ports down here, all these different USB type ports. Wow. It's got the new, the new one, and it's got, yeah, it's got all kinds of ports here. And there's another, wow, so it's got all kinds of different inputs. These are all, these are all for testing loads, I believe. And then this one says fine and coarse, so that's your fine and coarse adjustments. Turn those off, and there's a little beeper right here, a little buzzer. Well, all right, so I, I'd have to own these connectors to see if they're all tied to the same point, or if those three transistors, one does, you know, that each one does a different function. I don't know. For today, we just want to power the scene up and see if we can make it do something. All right, so there's our power source for this thing. And then, what do we got here? Okay, so that's the USB uh, load, so you, I guess you plug that in and uh, maybe you connect that, that to anything. See, I'm kind of curious how this is supposed to, how those other ports work. And just a black and red jumper wire they give you. And if you're not in the U.S., I guess you can use this guy. All right, hey, let's power this guy up and test it. I plugged in the power connector so I can plug this in. Well, this is interesting. It has a, another little jack here, so I guess you can power it. Yeah, it looks like they're in parallel, so... Yeah, you can power it with one of those kind of guys if you have that. 6 to 12 volts, so it's pretty universal. Well, there we go. Let's watch it. Here, let me zoom in. All right, so that that powered up pretty fast. I'm going to disconnect and power it up again to see if, uh, see if we missed anything. No, I thought it might do a self-test or something, but it just came right up. All right, and reading the manual, it sounds like this guy has variable speed, so it, it moves as much as it thinks it needs to to keep itself cool. So 
like that so it's just not running full blast all the time. Let me show you the test setup. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to um, use this power supply here and we're going to put a load on it. The input's right here. It's connected to my lap supply on the bench here. And I've got a oh, times one times uh, times one times ten scope probe right here. Going to the scope channel one, and it's set for the times ten position over here. I've got the differential probes um, going to the scope to look at the output. And the output's this uh, yellow and green wire that wraps around here. And I was connected to this eight ohm resistor, so here let's disconnect those guys. And that was the plus, right? The one closest to the fan. Okay, I've got to see powered up. Was that light on before? Yeah, I didn't notice that LED, but there's a little blue LED down here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a nice blue LED, okay. All right, make sure I got these turned off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am, I am just going to um, turn on my power supply. Let me turn it on. Okay, so I got the power supply turned on, and then what I'm gonna do is, um, just crank up the power supply so this this guy turns on this little guy this guy will put out about 19 volts I'm gonna bring up my lab supply to 12 volts I think okay 10 volts it's, it's uh, kicking out 19 volts I'll just bring it up to I'll bring it up 14 volts what the heck well I got 15 volts okay so uh, 15 volts of the input, 19.2 on the output, and you can see it here on the display, I think, can't you? Let's see if you can. All right, so it says 19.3. There's a bunch of different modes. Um, that's a backlight. Oh, that's backlight. So you can adjust the backlight. I don't know how to do it, but okay. Ah, uh, heck, I don't know what all this stuff is. Well, it looks like it has different types of displays. I think this is just the one I'm going to use right here. So 19.3 volts and 0 amps. Okay. So let's see what happens. Wow, the fan's turned on. And, oh, so, okay, so I have 0.92 amps. Wow, that's, that is a coarse adjustment. I mean, it's not too bad, but you got to move it slow. It takes just a moment for it to catch up here. So I'm up to 3 amps, and look, I'm loading down the output. Now if I take this, oh, yeah, it just dropped. So let me back this off. Came back up. Now, meanwhile, this guy is telling me power, 39 watts. Uh, if it was a battery, it's saying I've got 0.44 amp hours. <laughs> anyway, uh, 25 degrees C, and it has a time here, which I never set up. And I guess this is equivalent to 9.24 ohms. That's, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like the fact it gives you the equivalent ohms. And it gives you the wattage up here, and, and I can adjust the current here. So let me change that down. Yep, there's 16 ohms. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Let's see if I get one amp, then it should be like 19 ohms, right? That's, you can get pretty, pretty good fine resolution here. So I'm 18.92 ohms and that's probably right 19 one I'm sure the math is probably right and 19 watts 1 amp 19 volts so wow there you go so um, this power supply cuts off at 
Let's see where to cut off about three amps. Here, I'll bring that up in the middle somewhere so then I can bring this up and then I can, whoa. Yeah, it already tripped it. So now I can back this guy off. I'll do it slow so it has a chance to, okay, right there. The output jumped up to 18.9, we're at 2.8. So 53 watts. It think it says 6.69 ohms. So wow! So for 60 bucks, you have 150 watts you can play around with and get variable resistance. I don't know if this thing does a step load. I didn't see anything in documentation, but I, I kind of wanted to test different kinds of power devices, and I thought for 60 bucks it'd be worth showing you guys uh, option instead of buying a more expensive active load. So instead of buying a bunch of load resistors, like you know, like this guy, I just rolled on there myself, four ohms, 200 watts, because I have two of them, and I didn't. It says right here, but I just made it easy for myself so I could see by looking down what it was. But anyway, those are nice to have, um, but. And that fan's pretty quiet. It's kind of nice to blow a little cool air around the lab, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I think that's pretty cool. We'll experiment more with this as time goes on. I just want to introduce this thing in case you're thinking about, you know, building up a bench. Just wanted to bring this in and show an inexpensive load. All right, guys, what do you think? 60 bucks? Not bad, not bad for a little load, 150 watts. I think that's pretty decent. The um, fact that you get, you know, who knows how many loads you could count that you just replaced because of the variable resistance you get. You can go uh, up to 20 amps, or up to 200 volts, or up to 150 watts. Uh, 150 watts, you know, at 20 amps, and whatever voltage that ends up giving you, what is that, 15, uh, 7 volts or something like that? But um, anyway, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this, okay? Uh, thumbs up. Anybody ever used one of these guys? I'd like to know. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So, might have to get a little box for that. I don't know. Maybe I kind of like it out like that so it, has, it can keep itself cool. So, but yeah, I'll have to learn what all these other jacks, I'm going to uh, ohm these guys out to see how they're connected, see if uh, those three transistor devices I can see on the back, or maybe each one is doing a different port, I don't know, I'll ohm that out and let you guys know on a follow up, okay, but for now, I'm pretty impressed, I imagine you can always put a heat sink back here, but, well, anyway, all right, guys. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, okay? If, uh, hopefully, benefits somebody. All right, we'll see you next time.